Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So we're going to be making this winky eye guy. He's pretty funny. Pretty cute. Let's get started. Oh, and I am using a different yellow. This is actually yellow. And this is lemon. So, and then you'll need red, black, and white. I am using a number four hook. You're going to need scissors. You're going to need some pins for, you want to pin your stuff down for sewing. You will need a needle with the little hooked end or a needle like this for sewing. Alright, so first we're going to make a slip knot. You're going to chain three and in this first chain you're going to put 15 double crochets. That's 15. And then you can slip stitch into the top of this first chain. Chain two. And now you're gonna put two double crochets in each stitch around starting in the one you just put a chain two in. We're going to make this a habit throughout the entire project. We're always going to have two into the same space right there. So you should have a total of 30 stitches and you can just slip stitch to the top of that first chain and chain two. So we're going to start increasing and we're going to go two double crochet, one double crochet, two double crochet, one double crochet. So your first one is going to go in the same stitch you just put your chain two in. So like I said, we're going to make a habit of always putting, having two in this first one. So that's your first two. So your next stitch is just going to be one double crochet. Your next stitch is going to be two double crochets. Your next stitch is going to be one. So we're going to do that all the way around. Two, one, two, one, two, one.
and slip stitch the top of the first chain. So, chain two, oops, we'll put our double crochet in the same stitch like we're supposed to. So our next increase round is going to be two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. So we got our two, the next one's going to be one, and the next one's going to be one. Then we start a repeat again. So this will have two. Two. Then this one will have one. Next stitch will have one. So that's a repeat all the way around. I think a slip stitch to the top of that first chain and chain two and add your other double crochet in there just like that so our next round is going to be two one 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 so we started off with our two here So that's one. Next stitch gets one. And the next stitch gets one. So that's your repeat all the way around is two one one one, two one one one. And the slip stitch to the top of that first chain. So, the next round, you're going to chain two. You're going to put your double crochet into that same space. So your next round is going to be two, one, 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 one. So four over four stitches so two and then four single crochets over four one in each hole that's your repeat Alright, so we've got one more row, and this time it's going to be two, one, 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 so five single crochets and then two. So chain two, and then put your double crochet in that same space. So you're starting off with two. So each of the next five stitches is going to get one double crochet. All right, guys, so I'm done my one piece. You're gonna have a little bit of waves going on and that's fine. You kind of want that for when we put stuffing into it. 
Um, the first one you make, you can fasten off. So I fastened off with my first one. I'm going to put the pause screen up and I'll put the pattern on the pause screen so you know what to do to make your second one. Just know that it doesn't matter if you drop stitches or add stitches, but the two pieces have to have the same amount of stitches in your final row. Um, if not, when you sew it together, it's not going to be stitch for stitch, which means you're going to get bunching. So, I mean, if it's one or two off, it's probably not a big deal. But if it's like three and up stitches off, it's you're going to get the bunching. So, uh, I'll put the pause screen up. You can go ahead and follow the pattern on the screen and make your second piece. And I'll make meet you back here. And we'll start making some face parts. We're not going to we're not put this together yet. We're going to make our face parts. Okay, so I'm not fastening off. I am just going to leave it like this. And I'm just going to kind of toss it to the side for now. So we'll work on our mouth with our tongue next. So you're going to need your, your black and your red. And I know this is probably going to be difficult to see. Um, I'm going to get my extra light so it's helpful. Alright, so I got my light. This little guy here. That's the name. Um, if you want to look it up, it's actually a light, little lights that adjust the push of a button. And they bend and they're flexible, they move around. They're actually for reading, but I use them for colors like black and dark green and stuff so that I can see what I'm doing because it's very hard for me to see. So it does come in handy for making the videos too because you're going to be able to see better. I just got to get the angle of my lights right. I like that. So I hope this is helpful. So we're just going to um, change our hooks. So we're going to use a 4.5 hook for this and we're going to make a slip knot and you're going to chain 15 So starting in the first stitch you can get into, so that would be the next one. The one on your hook is your 15th stitch. So the only one that you can get into is this guy right here. So you're going to go into him, you're going to single crochet, and you're going to do that all the way back up. So for 14, all the way back up, single crochet. So, we're going to instantly start a decrease. So chain one, and turn. So in the first two stitches you're going to do two together, and the last two stitches you're going to single crochet two together. And then everything in between is going to be just a straight up single crochet. 
So that's how we're going to decrease. And we're going to do the same decrease for every single row. So the first two together. And then single crochet back up to the other end. So the last two stitches, you're going to single crochet. Oh, those are not my last two. Sorry. I'm still struggling to see this. Can't seem to get the light where I want it. So these last two stitches. Chain one, turn your work. So we're just going to repeat this process until we have four stitches along the top. And then we can continue from there. So if you want to work ahead of me, you can decrease all the way up till you have four stitches on the top. And then at that point though you're going to single crochet around the entire project so don't fasten off or anything after you're done single crocheting around the entire project then you can fasten off and then you can get your red One, two, three, four. So I got four left on top. So now I'm just going to single crochet around the whole outside wherever I can get my needle into. Generally the beginning of every row you should be able to find a spot to stick your needle. So I'll just put some stitches around. Just cleans up the edges and um, we kind of need the edges for sewing. So You can put two on the corner if you want to round it off a little more than it is.
So once you get back around to where you started, you can just slip stitch. That's just the tail from over here that I was weaving in. You can fasten off with enough tail for sewing. I'm just going to snip this off because I weaved him in. If you didn't weave your end in, then you have to weave it in. What is going on with this? Never had to cut off an end three times before. So we build the mouth upside down, but the mouth actually goes like this. So, let's see where I put this mouth, or this tongue. So get your red. I'm going to turn this light off. Okay, so turn your mouth upside right. Make your little slip knot. You're going to go into the fourth post. You're going to add your color. You're going to go to the next post. Make a stitch. Next post. Make a stitch. Next one. Make a stitch. The next one, make a stitch, one, two, three, four, five, one more, next one, make a stitch. So you have six stitches. Make sure you pull tight. Chain one, turn your work. Keep this tight. You're just going to single crochet into those six stitches for two rounds. And this last one might be a little awkward to get into. Chain one. Your second round. They'll have six stitches. Chain one. Now you're going to decrease. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to decrease again. You're going to turn your work. So we've got two stitches. You're going to put two, oops, you're going to put two single crochets into each stitch. Then you're going to fasten off. So it would have been really great if we would have been able to go around the outside of this, but that did not happen. Just because, oh, I moved my tongue the right way around. So, it's a little distorted right now.
but you can also spray it with water and water block it so you can shape it and move it around and shape it so to start as far as the shaping I'm just gonna go across like this so I've pulled that knot right down but you can if you wanted a really pointy tongue you can really pull that together and shape it and then just pull it down so it kind of gives that Led Zeppelin kiss thing you got going on so after you've come across and you've pulled it and you kind of want it where it is then you can just kind of weave weave this back and forth I like to just kind of hit every row because we couldn't go around the outside of it to shape it so it just kind of gives you the opportunity to kind of pull it all together you know and then you can finger block it or you can water block it either way will work and then this guy here which I should have made longer I'm just gonna shove him all the way back along here at the top kind of fills in some gaps This guy's for sewing. Yeah, I don't want to weave him in. So, there's your mouth and your tongue. Mine seems to be off-center. I think I just got to finger block everything's out of shape. But, there's your tongue and your mouth. So, um, let's do this little eye before I put the... I guess it doesn't matter, I can use black for the other eye. So. Let's see if I can just hang this off my camera. So. We'll do the, we'll do this eye now. So you're gonna need a magic ring with your 4.5. We're making all the face parts with the 4.5. So I just like to use my fingers to hold it tight. You put six single crochets into the center. And you can pull that closed. And then you're gonna put two single crochets in each stitch around. Don't worry about a marker, you don't need one. So that's one. So just count to 12. Two. That's 12. I'm just going to pull the center tight. And then I'm going to get my white. But 
all these colors in a way. So I'm going to get my white. And make a slip knot. So go through your first stitch. Attach your white color. Sorry. Make sure everything's tight. My camera just shut off. Come through. Make sure your black is tight with your white. Make a stitch. So you want to keep your black and your white tail together while we do this. So there's your first stitch. We're doing an increase row with the white. So in this next stitch, making sure you weave in your ends, you're going to put two single crochets. The next stitch you're going to put one single crochet. The next stitch you're going to put two and so on all the way around. You can cut your black off whenever. I'm just extra security, just gonna take it around with me, but you don't have to. I know it's awkward. And two, so we're at the end. You will have to put a stitch marker. So this is where our stitch marker goes. So our black can get cut off, preferably with sharp scissors. So we're done with that until we got to do our next eye. Our next eye isn't going to be like this though, our next eye is going to be different. So this round you're still going to be um, increasing. So I put my first stitch in already. The next stitch is going to get one. And the next stitch is going to get two. So you're doing one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, all the way around. So this next stitch is going to get one. Next one's going to get one. And the next one's going to get two. So repeat that all the way around. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two. And then your repeat should end at your marker. Turn that light down a little bit. So that's your eyeball. You can fasten off. But leave a tail for sewing. So I'm just going to tie a knot in the back of this guy. Uh, he's getting sewn to something, so. And 
And then I'm just going to snip it off. Saves me weaving it in and everything. So there's your great big open eyeball. So to make it even at the top because it's a little uneven because the way we worked it. Whoops. Let's go around the back. Go into that stitch. Make sure you get both pieces. Grab your yarn and then just pull through. And then that kind of gets pulled down a little bit. So when you start sewing it on, you can just stretch it out. Get rid of that hump. It's nice and flat. Nice, great big eye. So last but not least, your other eye. It's pretty simple. Pretty, pretty fast, pretty easy peasy. You're just going to make a slip knot. And again, using your 4.5, you're going to chain 11, you are going to single crochet in the first stitch you can get into, you're going to do another single crochet. We're going to do a half double crochet. You're going to do another half double crochet. You're going to do a double crochet. Another double crochet. sure I'm hitting the right stitch. A half double crochet. Keeping everything tight. Another half double crochet. And then the last two stitches is just a single crochet each. And pull everything tight. You can fasten off. With a long piece for sewing, as usual. So, it does have a bit of a curve. So when we sew it on, we're just going to make sure it, it curves. So you can control how much of the curve you get when you sew it on. This piece you can... weave in so take your piece that you fastened off with you can pull your center tight and then tie a knot just so it doesn't open up anymore Snip that off, this piece here. You can just go in and grab a hold, pull him through and down. Oops. light some normal light so this is your front this is your back this is my seam hard to see on here it's hard to see period but this is my seam so I'm going to try to keep him at the top I'm 
I always find it easier to sew the mouth on first. And I don't generally go that far over to the side. So I'm putting the bottom, which is the four stitches across, just on this end of this row. So I am leaving this because I'm sewing it together so that it's going to be on the curve, a bit of a curve. And just make sure it's somewhat centered. Stick a pin or two in it. You don't really need a fancy needle. We're just using this needle because it's got one of these ends on it. So once you're pretty sure it's straight, you're just going to come up and down and up and down and you can make your long stitches at the back, but I would suggest you make short stitches at the front. So try to go into actually each stitch. But definitely make sure you come up into the corners. Because that's where it's going to roll over. Um, over time, it will roll over. So once you're satisfied, I would do all this, try to do all your stuff at the back behind this guy. So you're not going to see any of this come through. Keep in mind, it's going to be all stuffed and sewn to something. Doesn't mean that it still can't come unraveled. So. There's your mouth. <laughs> Cute. Okie dokie, Smokey. So, figure out where we want our eyeball. So, I'm just trying to stick along this edge there. I'm just trying to come up into the stitches and then go down into the stitches but from the back side I'm skipping a stitch I'm not really coming up in every single stitch but when I do I go back down it's the very next stitch and 
and then that way you're not noticeable. So, not really out of shape a whole lot. I think that's not too bad. And then this guy, I'm just going to kind of shape him as I sew him. But for the most part, I will stick a little out. Yeah, see that pin is too big. It's going to be hard to, well, maybe not. Let's try it. So it's not horrible. You can tell it's a little winky eye. Well, it's a little winky eye guy. You can tell. So again, I'm just going to make sure I stick underneath this eye. really have a lot of room with this guy to tie a knot. Nor apparently the skills. That's not bad. So, you want to get your other half and do the same thing at the back here. You can just tie a knot. Pull tight and tie a knot. I snip it off a little bit. So I got my seam at the top here and my seam at the top there. I just want to match up the seams as best as I could. So once my seams why do I feel like they're not matched up here? Once my seams are all matched up, I can now start going stitch for stitch. Do you know what I mean? And single crocheting. And that's why it was important to make sure that you had the same amount of stitches. And single crochet in every stitch around leave a little bit of an opening for getting your stuffing in but you're gonna want to go stitch for stitch because if you don't you're gonna get that bunching and and you certainly don't want to but leave an opening so we can get our polyfill in there And I will meet you back. Well, I, I'll probably just speed this part up. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to meet you back either at normal speed or just meet you back.
All right, I'm back and I got a little bit of the a um, little bit to go, so I'm gonna start stuffing. So keep in mind when you're stuffing it, you don't want to overstuff it because you don't want your face distorted. Everything doesn't get lost in there. So if you push on this and it bounces back, you probably have enough stuffing. If you push on it and it doesn't bounce back, then you probably need more. So I'm just going to shove some near the top here because when I close it, um, it uh, going to need to move it around. I had to stand up and do that because look at this is my box of filling. Yeah, pretty ginormous. So. That's why I had to sit down, sit down to sew it back up. I got that box at Michael's for 40 bucks and it's actually pretty good fill. So, but that's all I could get because we're in the middle of a pandemic and everything is sold out everywhere. I'm not sure why people are panic buying polyfill, but you know, whatever. So I got this great big box, so that's why I was stood up. So this is the awkward part. This is just trying to get it done up without screwing up your stitches, which I think I already did right there. Let's try this again. Once you get back around, you can just slip stitch. I think I put one too many stitches in there. Actually, that's where I want to slip stitch. So just slip stitch into the first stitch that you made. And you can fasten off. So then you just want to move your fill around so it gets up into that spot up here but I mean we don't need to mess around with it on camera you can you can move it yours around and, and stuff like that I'll move mine around after in its entirety so there you have it I don't know which one looks looks funnier. This one's a different color. Be nice to be able to get them all in the in the shot. <laughs> okay, um, they look better in person. I mean, they are kind of funny looking right now, but and I don't know why my tongue looks like it's off center. There was real no center with a having eleven stitches across, but. Anyway, so this guy, um, you can just hide him, what do with all my needles, at the back end of this seam here. There, all done. Can't really zoom out any more than that. <laughs> That's funny. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.